My background is, is mathematics, in particular uh, mathematical logic, a very theoretical field, but uh, also this was, I liked this very much. It was very uh, interesting and challenging for, uh, as a perspective, I was uh, looking for something to work interdisciplinary and not in a very specialized field with only three people interested in the topic. So I was looking for something interdisciplinary. And then when I started the PhD, I started also to take lectures in music theory. And then I did some studies on cognition of music. And uh, then it was by chance that I was uh, having an interview with Klaus Robert Müller and the Intelligent Data Analysis Group. And at that time, he acquired some money to explore the machine learning approach for, for BCI. And he had the money, but nobody to do it. And in the first moment, I was not so enthusiastic. And I was more into doing auditory things and music things. But then I started a little bit to look into this topic. And then I was. Uh, more and more attracted, especially in this very close interaction with neuro neurologists and this true interdisciplinary working. And this was in 2000. And yeah, from that on, it, it was my field. Although there, there's a uh, real strong debate at some, at some certain points, it's a very nice and uh, social community and at, at, the meeting, at the meetings it feels very nice that you work in a field with so many bright and also nice people and you can also talk about other things with them in a very nice way. I take BCI technology to be uh, very broad, not just a pure BCI where we use BCI for control of course, there's also a very broad range of uh, challenges. So, but in the, in the first place, I, I would say that we have to uh, demonstrate real applications where, where BCI is really of, uh, of use. So, there were so many um, exploratory studies and lab studies. So, now we have to move out of the lab and this is true for, for all kinds of applications. I think this is, this is still one of the challenges for the researchers to, to explore ways how it could be useful. So one uh, very hard challenge in the traditional BCI for control was to make BCI work for, for all kinds of users. Uh, where there was some progress, but uh, it, so still it's one of the biggest challenges that there's a non-negligible person of uh, group percentage of potential users who cannot work with it. And there are some applications, for example, what, what we call neuro usability, where one uses BCI technology to improve certain aspects of a, of a product where this doesn't play a role. So you develop for developing a project, you only need to assess it with certain uh, participants. And there you, you could use as, as participants ones who have very clear brain signals um, to, to use your neurotechnology to extract the aspects which, which can be used to improve the product. So, Therefore, I think this is quite, quite promising because we are circumventing this one strong challenge. And this, as this challenge seems to be inherent in the, in the EEG, that you, in some people you just don't get the, the signals from the sources you are interested in in the EEG, and then you cannot do anything, I believe, with any method. I think it's important uh, that the, the project involves some uh, target user group or some, some uh, in, 
in the case of industrial applications, it, you involve really the, the target industry at a very, very early stage, uh, such that from the beginning on, it's, it's clear uh, what um, are the important uh, key, key points in the, in, in the research, that you don't develop something in your, your laboratory studies that in the end is not of use for, for anybody. So I think it's very important to have this uh, joint project of the researchers who are developing and the people who are really have an interest in applying it in the end.